the, does anyone worry that, let's say, higher interest rates deal with a third of the underlying causes of inflation you can, you can deal with? That means we'd go, we have to go to three times as high as we really should be in terms of causing an economic slowdown to, to accomplish what we need to do with inflation. And, I mean, how high do you think we'd need to go to get 2% inflation again? Judy, we, you might, we might, I, I you might would, be 10%. I would challenge that basic strategy. I do not think that the key to reducing inflation is to curtail economic growth. And Powell has made it clear we want to get to restrictive interest rates, meaning we're going to cut off potential productive activity, the kind that would increase supply at a time when we're seeing these terrible productivity numbers. We're going to cut off productivity and we're going to try to make labor feel insecure so they're not as demanding in their uh, requests for wage gains that would keep them even with inflation. And somehow that's going to help. I, I think what we're seeing is, is a problem where it's taken so long for workers to come back into the workplace that companies are going to hang on to them even when they are not even marginally productive. Because what's the alternative? And then look at the, the larger economy. If, if people are working but they're, and they're getting paid, but they're not producing more supply, that makes inflation worse. And if people end up getting fired because the cost of capital for small businesses is so high they have to start cutting back on their operation, those people are still going to have demand power because they'll get unemployment and all kinds of government transfers. And we've seen it's these cash fiscal transfers that are, are the factor that really catapults inflation. So I don't think just raising interest rates to punishing levels is solving the problem of inflation. And I'm afraid if we continue to see inflation not succumbing much, that the Fed, instead of saying to itself, well, maybe our strategy is, is not appropriate when you have a situation where supply outdoes demand, I think they're going to double down and say, oh, well, we must have to go even higher. Judy, the, the one question with that, the idea of fixing the supply side of things would require money, and that in itself would be inflationary in most cases, unless you're looking at... Um immigration reform to maybe let more workers in? How, how do you kind of see that playing out? I do think we need to look at immigration reform, Becky. I think that's yeah. a great point. But the key here is productive economic activity. And I think that for the Fed to inhibit banks from making productive loans, and they've set up a very high hurdle for small business. If you go in to get a loan to a bank, from a bank, the first thing the bank's thinking is, we have cash sitting at the Federal Reserve, and by the end of the year, we're probably going to be getting 5% on that. And we don't have to have a loan officer to monitor it. We don't have to analyze how you're doing. We don't have to chase after you to make your interest payment. That's easy money for us. Mm -hmm. And that's the way the Fed raises interest these days, over, on over $5 trillion of cash held by banking institutions, and money market mutual funds and their accounts at the Fed. These are government guaranteed, risk-free, interest-bearing deposits for them, cash deposits. Oh, and I think that is really taking financial capital away from potentially productive entrepreneurial activity. So I right. think we need a whole different mindset at the Fed.